something awesome showed up. I ordered this thing back in January, uh, early January. I think they do pre-orders and build to order or something like that. But essentially what this is, the pressure control upgrade kit for my Kraken system, my Kraken tire inflation system. Um, this is gonna allow me to air the tires up via my cell phone, control from my cell phone, set the tire pressure to whatever I want to air up to, air up and it'll cut off. And that way I don't have to rely anymore on the tire pressure monitoring system in the Jeep. I've actually had times where I've been airing up with that system and it wouldn't update, wouldn't update, still said I had like 9 PSI in the tires or something like that. And then all of a sudden it would update and it'd be at 40 PSI or something. So this is gonna help me a lot. And by the way, hats off to the guys at freaking Epic. Those guys are awesome. I ordered this back in January. It didn't show up when it was supposed to. I reached out to them, they tracked it down, found out it was stuck in Canada Post. And instead of trying to actually you know, deal with that right away. They went ahead and sent me another one and then they tracked that one down. So Epic Adventure Outfitters, awesome guys, man. I was so stoked. New hose, pressure control system, ARB, all of the fittings all put together for you with the hose pieces, the elbows, everything you need to interface with it. Crack and sticker, of course. And the rest is junk. All right, so step one on this install, we already have the crack and tire inflation system in here. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and remove that uh, from under the seat first and get that on the bench so we can actually make the modification and Add the remote system. Now with all four bolt bolts loosened, what I can do is if you slide the seat all the way back, it's really gonna wanna tilt back almost on its own, as you can see here. And we'll let that go ahead and tilt back. So you can see, that actually disconnected the hose. This goes to the driver's side outlet. And I've disconnected the electrical here. And now we can just go ahead and lift this whole guy out. All right, so first things first, uh, my understanding is that sometimes when you get these from ARB, this exhaust port here could be a little bit loose or not tight. And sure enough, if you can see that, that's a little loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and snug that up a little bit, make sure it's tight. We don't want that coming loose later and you don't have to overdo it. Just, you know, it's, don't over torque it. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this uh, male pipe fitting. We're not gonna need this on here at all. So we'll go ahead and take that off of there. 12 millimeter wrench. And we're not gonna be using that at all. So right next to the port where we kind of snug this guy up, we're actually gonna put one of the straight fittings. You know, there used to be a straight one coming out of the top here. They give you an elbow now, and that's going to be going to the other side. It is a 13 millimeter for this guy. And you don't need to freaking over crank it here because you don't want to crush that o-ring right so don't overdo it and then this guy is a 17 millimeter same thing don't crush that o-ring it just snug it up good you got thread sealing in there and an o-ring so it doesn't need to be overly done so the other one we're going to want to remove is the top one on this side that you can see is also an output uh, that's a three millimeter allen head doesn't take a lot Pull that guy out. And that is actually going to be going to the passenger side output. So we'll use this one over here, straight out. Again, don't overdo it. 
Then the last piece is going to be the pressure sensor, which comes out of the top of this port here. And that'll go in just above the ARB logo here. And that should be a 22 millimeter. And it's easy to overdo it with a big wrench like that, so don't crank it too tight. And there you have it. There's all your fittings. So you've got passenger side output, you've got output to the driver's side, this is the input from the compressor, and this is for your actual uh, pressure sensor. All right, here's where things take an interesting turn. So if you have a new Kraken system, and again, they've updated these to work on the 2024 uh, Wranglers with power seats, and this bracket would normally go on here in this direction. But because we actually have an existing Kraken, you'll notice that in the plate down here, there are no holes drilled for that. All right, so the next thing we gotta do is we've actually gotta install this L bracket, which is gonna hold this whole assembly onto your Kraken assembly under the seat. So to do that, we've gotta go ahead and take these caps off and you'll find a couple of O-rings under here. These are pretty snug, by the way. I loosened them up, as you can tell. And we're gonna pull these O-rings off of here so we can slide the sensor, these, um, these relays up and off of the stud. There we go. Be careful not to uh, obviously tear your O-rings here. That would be a that would be a travesty. Might not recover from. <laughs> okay, so let's keep things in order here. So we've got this side here, this side here. So now we're gonna go ahead and take the bracket and we're gonna place this. You'll notice there's two sets of holes, small ones and big ones. It's obvious the big ones need to go down. Um, and this is gonna be facing away from the actual uh, valves themselves because this is what you're gonna be able to mount to. Put our solenoids back on. We'll go ahead and put our O-rings back on. And we can tighten our thumb screws back on. They are plastic, so just got to be careful. Okay, guys, this is literally where my OCD usually gets the best of me. So, as I pointed out, if you use the fixed bracket, this is for new installations. Now, the fixed bracket means you have to bolt this to the main bracket right down here, and that would require two holes to be there. Those holes don't exist on mine because this is an old version. Now, to do that, I'd have to drill holes in here, or they say you could actually use this in a floating configuration where this just floats in, in midair, you know, attached to the actual hoses themselves. And they say that that's a good solution, but it means you also have to, a heating duct that sits right here, your HVAC duct that sits right here in the Jeep. To do that, they want you to cut two inches off of that duct. Well, again, my OCD is getting the best of me and I'm thinking to myself, well, why don't I just go ahead and take the compressors themselves, move them forward about a half an inch, drill some new holes in the black bracket, and then go ahead and bolt this guy here where it's supposed to go. So I think that's what I'm gonna try. Now, I, I'm diverging from the instructions. I'm gonna give this a shot and see if I can pull it off. Uh, if it doesn't work out, I'll regress and go back to the original locations and maybe use a floating solution and cut the duct. But right now I want to give this a shot and see if I can make it work. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and added a couple of quarter inch holes here. That is going to allow me to bolt the fixed bracket here. Now note, I'm doing this and that means I'm going to have to take the original locations where the compressor was mounted and also move those in slightly to make room for this mounting location. But I think that's going to allow things to line up pretty well with the hose over here on the side and I can kind of, you can see you can kind of turn this as needed if uh, with the slotted holes and I think that's going to work out pretty good. Uh, I did go ahead and before I bolt this, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little blue dock Loctite, as you can see here, on the bolts. This sits under the seat, lives under the seat, and I don't wanna be messing with this in the future if I can avoid it. Let me show you what I've done here. So I've gone ahead, as I stated, drilled a couple of holes, pretty much equidistant from these two spaces, so it's lined up right at where the fan goes into the actual compressor area. 
and I've gone ahead and fixed that now so it's not going to be floating. I did cut a small piece of the hose to go across here and you can see there's a little bit of an angle here and that looks like it's going to work out pretty good. Uh, by the way, be careful when I'm drilling holes here, you want to make sure that none of your shavings are going to end up in your air hoses in any way. So if you have an open spot, be sure you plug that up before you start drilling. All right, let's take a good hard look at what we got going on here. So this is where my wiring comes up from underneath the Jeep um, that I, I did when I originally did the Kraken system. You'll notice that if you look under here, there is a lot of wiring that is coming from underneath the uh, duct, your heating duct, your HVAC duct. And all that wiring, the stock wiring for the Jeep sits under that. Now where this is mounted, you'll notice that it's wanting to butt up right against those. And so what I did was I actually went under the carpet here and slotted the holes in the bracket that holds these wires and slid everything forward. Probably a good, oh, three quarters of an inch, half inch, three quarters of an inch. And what that, and then I went ahead and put some wire loom on here as well to protect the wires because they're going to be sitting just below this when we slide it forward into its location. So if we get this all the way forward to where it needs to go, you can see it is blocking off a part of the heating duct. So what I'll do is I'll trim that heating duct back just a little bit. Uh, definitely, definitely don't want to trim it back too far because we don't want the carpet in front of it. But I'll trim the heating duct back just a little bit. And I think we're gonna be good to go. Let's take a look at the finished product here on the main bracket. Even, even though this is an old bracket, you can see that I went ahead and hard mounted the system. And then what I did was move three quarter inch off of the existing holes for a, a new set of holes. And now what we have is a completely hard mounted system. Uh, so compressors mounted, new control system and manifold mounted and then i'm routed back to the original locations here for everything else and um, with the modifications to the wiring harness under the seat to move everything forward about half an inch or so i've given myself enough room here for the wires to sit just kind of right in this area uh, under the seat which is really good okay so let me go ahead and get this thing plumbed up and we'll get it installed so now what we're going to do, originally we had a piece of tubing coming here and it was coming down into to, to the manifold. Now we're going to go ahead and plug that up. We don't need that any longer. But we're going to need to come out of the compressor into our new manifold. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and connect one end down here into, as you can see, the fitting at the bottom, which is our input from the compressor. And we're going to take the other end, we're going to wrap that around the back of the compressor and we're going to pop that in right up here on top. And this is a 24 inch long piece that comes with the kit. Just like that. Now you're going to want to make sure that those are bottomed out and they click all the way in guys. So now we're going to do a little prep on the wiring harness. We want to take the three black wires come, or I'm sorry, two black wires and red white, one red wire coming out. We're going to cut those down to about three inches and we're going to go ahead and install. We're going to route the red wire to the red terminal. Uh, plug and we're going to route the two, we're going to group up the two grounds and we're going to route those to the ground terminal. Okay, so there you go. About three inches, both blacks routed to the ground, one hot wire routed to the red terminal. All right, so now that we've got our two piggyback terminals on here, red and black, we're actually going to take those and the way this connects to the old switch, if you have an existing installation, is we're going to pull off the purple out here. We're going to take our red piggyback terminal, and we're going to plug that in here where the purple was. And then we're going to take the purple and put that onto the piggyback. Just like that. So you got purple red. Now we're gonna take the two blacks, we're gonna pull our black off of the other terminal over here. Okay. We're gonna stick our black piggyback on that side. Like so, and then we're gonna take our black, old black terminal and put that back on, on the piggyback. There you go. So you should have purple, red, red, 
Then you've got your blacks, the two blacks that you just married together onto the piggyback, and you put the black from the switch that comes back over here, back onto that. Then we have control unit, the pressure control module. That is going to plug in right into the six pin, or excuse me, eight pin connector. So you can see that here. And that normally would just slide right under here, under the switch. But I think what I'm gonna do is use a little bit of Velcro on this to make sure that I don't have any issues uh, in the future. All right, let's take a look at what we got. So everything installed, hard mounted. I went ahead and used some Velcro to put down the actual control module over here. So I can actually pull that up if I need to. And you can see we got Velcro in there. And that'll give that a nice little spot to live just under the side of the seat there. Um, showed you the wiring before. I'll go ahead and zip tie all this stuff together so it's nice and tidy underneath. And now let's move on to our last connections here. So this is clearly tire pressure sensor, or the actual, excuse me, <laughs> control module. Um, so for the sensor to be able to turn the system off. Okay, and now what we want here is we're gonna want orange side going to the first terminal over here, first solenoid. And then we're gonna want purple going to the second one on the other side over here. Okay, now these are a three millimeter Allen. So we can go ahead and tighten those down. No need to crank them down with an impact wrench. They're just electrical connectors. They're just there to hold in place just in case the system vibrates. I mean, it's a compressor, so it does vibrate a bit under the seat. There we go. And then of course, our last connection that we'll make once we're under the seat is we've got this going to the driver's side. So you can see the outlet here for pressure to go to the driver's side. We'll cut that one down because it used to come around the back, the back of the compressor and plug in up here, but that's no longer there. And this will connect to the electrical. So let's get this guy reinstalled and we'll test it out. Now we can go ahead and connect our electrical here and we can go ahead and take our old hose here before we go ahead and anchor this down. What I want to do is have enough mobility to where I can actually manipulate this and move it around. I'm going to go ahead and cut this and we'll get that inserted into the driver's side. All right, there you have it folks. So manifold is in there, solenoids are in. Got the splice running over to the driver's side from the elbow. Electrical wires are reconnected. And now we're just gonna go ahead and test it out before we uh, anchor the seat back down. Make sure everything's working just fine. Everything is connected and we're all set up. But before I bolt this seat back down, I wanna test this out. So as you can see, I went ahead and connected all the tires. Um, so we're all connected up. So what we'll do first, let's go ahead and fire up the compressor. Or the Kraken, I should say. Then what we're gonna do, hopefully we've got the app all dialed in here. So we can head to the ARB app. Okay, let's see if we can connect. Connect to PCM. Should be automatic actually, so it's scanning. Found and connected. There we go. So tire pressure is currently at 32 and we've got it set to 32, but if I increase the pressure, it should go ahead and kick on. So let's try this out. Let's pump it up to say 37 PSI, which is really where it should be. And there we go. So that will go ahead and air up now to 32 or 37 PSI if I let it run. But let's say we want to actually reduce the pressure and set it down to whatever we want to set it at. Now, instead of airing up, the solenoids have started to release air, and so now they'll drop the air pressure down to whatever air pressure we want. So you can see it going down now. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to 32 so we can stop. We'll just leave it there for now. And you can see, since it's at 32 PSI, it stops, and it looks like everything's working pretty good. So, I'm gonna go ahead and button this up. 
Okay, so just the reverse of what we did earlier. So there you have it, all buttoned up. Looks pretty stealth, I think. Um, and overall, installation isn't really that bad. Um, I'm actually gonna do a comparison of this uh, against a power tank solution. So we can see how long it takes to air things up and I'll do a little discussion about the pros and cons of each. So again, if you found this interesting, uh, subscribe, hit that like button and the notification bell and uh, we'll see you next time guys.